Good evening. It is time to begin. I have a <clears throat> seven o'clock. Tonight we'll be in the book of Genesis, chapter three and around verse 19, I think it is. <clears throat> Genesis 3 and 19. We'll continue our studies from last evening. Our, our Bible verse this week is from the book of Genesis, chapter two, and I think it's verse 23. Genesis 2 and verse 23. This is the memory verse. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 23. <clears throat> and Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. That's uh, close. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to get these before Wednesday. I really am. <clears throat> In two nights. And she and Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Yeah, very good. I got it. So Genesis 2.23. I got to get the verse right. Genesis 2.23. And Adam said, this is now bone of my, this is now. This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Okay. Hope you can get that memory verse this week. Uh, the All three verses are going to be about marriage. Okay. Next week will be about marriage. The following week, of course, we're going to take time and we're going to um, um, go over all three verses that week. Okay. Something new we're going to try. I'm hoping it'll help to imprint it better. I've found this at least two times, three times the best to go through them. Um, let's open in the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the mercy you show us. Thank you for being loving and caring. And dear God, we thank you for how you are so kind and considerate. We have studied these verses, and God, we have only scratched the surface. But I pray that each person comes away with what you want them to have, Lord. Help us to study, help us to apply it to our lives. In Christ's name we pray, amen. All right, so let's go to the quiz for today, all right? Um, and certainly I appreciate those. Those, thank you for following. Um, a lot of you are, I don't say this enough. Let me stop and say this. There's a lot of you that are loyal uh, listeners, and I don't tell you thank you enough. Um, not because I'm trying to make a lot of money. I don't make money off of this. Maybe one day there'll be money given. I don't know. My job right now is we're trying to learn the word of God. And if I can uh, have these in there and they don't take them down, uh, if I'm dead and gone, somebody can at least go behind them. Brother Glenn, you think you're that good? No, I am not. I don't know why God does this. That's just the way God is. And I've found in my life the greatest things I've ever been able to accomplish or to get involved with is something that's spontaneous that I didn't know about. It's like trying to go to seminary school, but I didn't. And God said, go to medical school. And while I was there, I was sitting under another preacher who was, oh, my goodness. Just, oh, yeah, I was in seminary school. I learned what I needed to learn. With all, all the other frills, I really got what I needed. I like apprenticeship. Anyway, let's go to the uh, quiz for tonight. You'll open up your Bibles. Let's go ahead and turn there. Uh, no, I still don't have it in there. Okay, www. There it comes up quickly. All right, so tonight we'll be in the book of Genesis. Our quiz we're going to go over tonight. There are 10 questions, four, five verses. We didn't get through much last night, but we did a lot of looking at it. Do you remember we talked about, I forgot about Dorcas. You know, oh, gosh, Dorcas was, oh, I remember everybody just talking how wonderful she was. Uh, me and Matt were talking about not many bad people, women in the Bible, but that was Jezebel, right? <laughs> There were some bad women in the Bible. There were some good women. Oh, some wonderful people. Uh, yeah, the, and it's the old uh, ploy. I can't take credit for this. I listened to Robin Zacharias years ago describe the bringing forth of the Messiah when Pura and Ada, the two midwives who wouldn't kill the children in the days of Moses, uh, his wife, his mama who hid him for three months, uh, his sister who watched him in the bulrushes in the river, and Pharaoh's daughter who pulled him from the Nile. Five women who are mentioned to bring about the Messiah and uh, no man. God just honors women, you know, and that's the case of Jesus being born of the woman. 
Uh, that's one of those. You got your, everybody there? You ready? Number one, why did God say he would put enmity between the woman and the serpent? Because there was no enmity between them then. But one day he would drive away between them because they were the same. Think of this. You got Adam and you got Eve. Excuse me, let's start again. You got Satan and you got Adam. Satan first, Adam second. Satan, what happened? I sinned against the Lord. Adam, what happened? I sinned against the Lord. Satan, what did you do? Pride. I wanted to be God. Adam, what did you do? Pride. I wanted to be God. Tree to be designed to make one wise. Can't find much difference in them, can you? So many similarities. Both of them rebelled against God. Now, this is why the angels desire to look into it. Satan is a fallen, he's an angel that's fallen because of what God said. Whereas you look at Adam, he's a man. But God died for the for Adam. He, he didn't die for the angels. The angels who left their first estate are reserved for the judgment of God. Hell is prepared for the devil and his angels, but not for man. God provided the way for them. Why? Why is it that God loves man so much? That's hard to believe. Anyway, there's going to be a wedge driven between those when Jesus comes. Number two, what two emotions are mentioned to the man and to the woman? I'm only using verse number 15 through 19. What emotions do you find here? Nate, what two emotions? I could only remember one of them. Sorrow. Sorrow in particular. If you'll notice... Verse 16, in sorrow, right? And number 17, uh, what is it, Brian? For thy sake, in sorrow shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. That's verse number 17, right? Um, I didn't have the other narrative, it was emotion. But I apologize. I say incorrect. So what is one emotion? It's not two. It's one. I will correct this one because it's only one emotion. It was sorrow. That was what was unique to both of them. And their um, when you think about what they went through, and sorrow, you're going to have children. And sorrow, you're going to eat. Three. The woman was she was she deceived? Yes. We read that over and over. First Timothy chapter what? First Timothy chapter two verse. Yeah, 12, 13, 14, 15, there, that's right. Get that close, you can get the rest. What was God's charge against Adam? What did he charge him with? <clears throat> what accusations bring you against this man? That's what Pilate said. The judge says, what are the accusations against this person? What's the charge? charges against them? What was God's charge against Adam? He listened to his wife. I'll read it for you in verse number 17. And because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. Seven. What was multiplied in sorrow for the woman? Conception and childbirth. It says, multiply in sorrow and conception, and sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. What is the final statement to man? I'm like missing something. Oh, verse number five. The man would eat bread like this, per God, in the sweat of his face. You're going to eat bread, but it means you're going to have to sweat. You're going to have to work for what you've got, right? You're going to have to work for it. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you that if any would not work, neither should he eat. But if any would provide not for his own, especially they of his own house, behold, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. I'm just quoting. I know that's fast. I apologize. <clears throat> but God requires work. New Testament scriptures from Timothy and Thessalonians is, for, but if any provide not for his own, especially them of his own house, they of his own house, behold, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. He's going to, in the sweat of his, and he was uh, in the sweat of his face. What was God's charge against the woman? Verse number number six. What was his charge against the woman? 
So number five, man would eat bread like this in the sweat of his face. Number six, what was God's charge against the woman? None. Punishment? She was deceived, but it doesn't really say. She partook of the fruit, right? But it doesn't really give a charge, does it? This is nice, says it. Under the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow. That's the judgment. Sorrow conception, bring forth children. Desire to be thy husband. He'll rule over thee. Doesn't really say what the charge is. That was a trick question, of course. What was multiplied in sorrow for the woman? Childbirth, etc. Eight. What is the final statement of man? Ah, you see, the final statement. They find because Adam, we said last night, he thought he got away with it, but then all of a sudden, God says, "You're going back to the dust, death." I did not forget about it. You're going to die. That was the final thing. I the dust thou art made, take it and out of the return until I return to the ground, for out of it thou was taken, and for dust thou art, and dust shalt thou return. Nine, what did we say was the connection with Abraham? Do you remember? Hearkened unto his wife. In fact, we, it was almost verbatim, remember? He hearkened to his wife. Ten, what does it mean that the desire of the woman would be to her husband? She'll want to be like her husband, but he'll rule over you. The desire of it will be to what? It's des her desire will be over the man, but he'll do the ruling. By the way, you, you know, right now, womanhood is going to go by the wayside. The more men, especially take over women's sports, all things that women do now where they've gained so much, women's liberation gained so much for the women, they're going to lose that because the men are going to say, we're women. And the men, they're going to say, yeah, you are a woman. And guess what? Men will take over. Where's the National Organization of Women? Do you, have you heard of them lately? Man, back in the 90s, they were you couldn't get around those people. Now, I did extra credit. I actually put there very hard. And all that God said unto the man, what was the common theme? Let's read it. Listen to the man. <clears throat> because I was hearkening to the voice of thy wife, and I was eaten of the tree, which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of the curse of the ground for thy sake. The sorrow shall eat all days of thy life. Thorns and thistles shalt thou bring forth. Thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shall eat bread, as thou return to the ground. Right of it thou was taken. For dust thou art, and dust thou shalt return. What is the common theme And when he talks about Adam? What's the common theme? And everything he says to the man it has one common theme in all of it. The dirt. Right? It's all about the dirt. It's all about the dust. Absolutely correct. Look how he says it. Adam. Cursed is the ground. That's in verse 17, right? Sorry, you're going to eat of the ground all the days of your life. 18. Thorns and thistles shall it, what's that? The ground, bring forth to you. Number nine, thorns and thistles. He says, 19, eat the sweat of thy face and you'll eat bread. Working what? The ground. Dust you are, you'll return to the earth. It's all about the earth or the dirt or the dust of the ground. Everything about Adam's judgment has to do with the earth itself and where he came from. It's ironic, and it's something I, if I could take time and study through it, I think we could glean probably more into it than this, but that's another study. Perhaps you'll have time, and you'll be able to, to look into these and to figure these out. I hope you'll have time to do those. All right, that was hard, right? That was hard. What's the common theme in Adam? It's judgment, it's all judgment. That's all judgment. But well, we know that's what, that's what Adam, Eve had. Let's make it what's different here. That's what it's about. When you read about the woman when it comes to childbearing, it's all about the childbearing. But your desire is going to be like your husband. Sin's going to cause you. You're not going to want to be subordinate. You know the greatest challenge to a woman today? 
He said, Brother Glenn, is this a sin? Yeah, it is. God wants the man and the woman to live in holy matrimony, but it's to be where the woman and the man have relations when they deal with each other every day where he is the head of the household. She's the one who supports it. Even in her creation, she was created to what? Help the man. God's got Adam. Hey, Adam, uh, uh, I need you to do me something. Name all these animals for me, okay? Adam, uh, I want you to till this garden for me, okay? Eve, what are you going to do? Uh, I want you to take care of your man. You help him. He's got a job to do. He's already named down. You gotta, he's got to till the ground. Just help him. You know, I'm, I'm reminded of the women of yesteryear who were, many of them were abused by the men. Uh, they, 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 they didn't do right, but we had a lot of good women who would get up before dawn. They would cook there for their men, take care of their families, make sure the house was taken care of every day, raising kids. And when the husband got home from work, his food was ready. His clothes had already been washed. Bed sheets had been changed. Water had been drawn up to, feed, to get him fed and to get him washed. All the things that she did to make sure that he could go to work the next day. Now, with, with, with those years have gone by. All right, you ready? Let's dive into the new, okay? Number 20. <clears throat> and Adam called his wife's name Eve. Now, this is where we began to get some of the... Uh, Things out of the box. Where do you get the, ver the word Eve from? It says here clearly because she is the mother, because she, the mother of all living, and all those that live, it was she is the mother of all women, all men. You know, neither is the man without the woman because without her, you don't have the men, right? You can't have the population grow without a woman. That's, that's an impossibility, okay? Um, let me move on here for just a minute. And to Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. The first thing that Adam does, by the way, have you ever noticed what the word Adam means? Where do you get that? When you take your interlinear, do you have an interlinear? The Blue Letter Bible has one. The Blue Letter Bible has an interlinear that you can uh, use. Um, and the man, it's called, now that Adam is his name. But when you begin to look and see it, let's see if I can find it. Because they always calls him Adam. Here it is. In verse number 12, it says this. And the man said. Now, it says the man. The actual word is Adam. A-D-A-M. The word Adam is man. That's the, the, the man is H-A, then A-D-A-M. Adam. That's what man is. You interpret man is Adam. Hebrew is Adam. But now he calls his wife Eve. Calls his wife Eve because she is the mother of all living. Let me pull this up for you just for a minute. Um, last thing. Has Eve had any children yet? Well, she might be able to have kids. God told me fruitful and multiply. You know God's going to help them. Has no children, but she's the mother of all living. And she, if you've ever seen this, take in your Bibles and underline these. Now, in verse number 23 of chapter 2, Genesis 2, 23, Genesis 3, verse 20. 
What is common to those things? In verse number 20, chapter 2, verse 23. Ad, and, Adam, and Adam said, she shall be called woman. Verse 20, and Adam called his wife's name Eve. Who gave woman her name? Adam, the man did. He gave her the, called her woman because she was taken, not man, but a woman. She was taken out of man. Second thing to look at. Um. Mm. This word comes up here. If you notice it called his wife. That's a marriage term, isn't it? Called his wife's name, Eve. Now you understand, this is a marriage. Well, all marriages ain't made in heaven. Well, none of them were. Some of them aren't and some are. That's not a true statement. That's a that's a statement where you're trying to get out of it and you just want to make an excuse. Um, one lady told me, well, you get a bad apple, you throw it back and get another. No, you don't throw things away that quickly. But the truth he says here, this is his wife. And he names her. She's the mother of all living. Never had a child in her life. That's the point. Now, that's the final thing. It's like you get the judgment. So you first, Adam is questioned. Then Eve is questioned. Then the judgments come out. First the judgment for the serpent, then the judgment for Eve, and finally the judgment for Adam. You got that order, right? Where are you, Adam? I don't want to. So God questions him. Did you eat of the tree? Woman, what have you done? Other times giving him a chance to repent. Then he gives up the judgment. Serpent, because you've done this. Woman, you're going to have this. Man, you're going to have this. And then it's interjected. Adam called his wife Eve there. Both now, was it possible they could have had children before the fall? Sure, God had already told them to be fruitful and multiply, but they didn't. They had no children until this time, so now God has given out judgment, and the last judgment He gave to the man was dust you are, and dust you'll return. I promised it in Genesis chapter 2 and verse. 17, you're going to die. But he didn't die. Or did he? Spiritually, Adam died. He is now tainted. He has a sin nature. And the Lord God also said unto his and unto Adam, unto Adam also and to his wife, did God, Lord God, make coats of skins and he clothed them. Now, I'm going to take this Genesis chapter 3 and verse 21 and just take a moment just with it because it's in it's that important. Let's give me just a moment. That one's getting a little bit. Let's see if I can still use it. Well, that's much better, isn't it? Yeah. Brothers and sisters, they don't cost that much. So you're throwing away perfectly good, but yeah, absolutely right. It's, it's too cheap to buy to get a new one. See, okay, Genesis chapter three, verse twenty-one. Watch what we notice here. Compare this. You ready? Read those two verses. What do you get from those? Put on your thinking caps. What do you get? Right. Here. Let me put them, let me put them side by side. That'll make it easier. Easier to see it that way. Okay. Genesis 3, 7. Genesis 
3, verse 21. Here, man covers his sin. Here, God covers man's sin. Does that make sense? You see, those three first, you can still read into Genesis chapter 1, 2, and 3. There's so many things I'll point you to see the New Testament scripture. You can't cover your own sin. God can cover your sin. God made coats of skins and he covered them. He shed blood to cover them. That's an absolute fact. We know that. God did this for a purpose. God covered their nakedness. God knew they had a problem, and God to what God what man cannot do, God does. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak, weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. He died to cover man's sin, to make an atonement, to make it right. Here, God just covered their nakedness. He covered their sin. God does it. Or man does it, and this is not acceptable. Okay, let's move on. That's, I, I, that's why I like losing a like board or white board. It's just too easy. And the Lord God said, by the way, He clothed them, right? Did you know God has always been the one that covers our sins? Only by God can it happen. And the Lord God said, I'm in Genesis chapter 3, verse 22. Behold, the man has become as one of, underline in your Bible, us. The Lord God. Take your inner linear. Now, if you got a, there's an app on your phone you can call the Blue Letter Bible app. It gives you a lot of these that you can get. Um, it says the Lord, now that's Yahweh, Y-A-W-E-H. Y, me, y a h w e h. Then the God is Elohim. Now that's the plural for God. El and Elohim. God is singular and plural. But the word interpreted Lord, Lord is Yahweh, the personal name of God. We get that if you look at the word tetragrammaton, T e t r a tetragrammaton, G r a m a t o n. Just look it up. You'll see it in this word. You get Jehovah, Elohim. And he says, become one of us. God is, God says, man is like us now. He's like us. What is he like them? He knows good and evil. It says clearly. Because man has become as one of us to know good and evil. This is one of those statements going to take a while to, 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 to break it down. But the biggest thing is try to break it down in the manner where we understand it and we keep it. Brother, then you're not smart. No, I'm not that smart. I just listen to this. I've studied it. And then I listen to what the Lord has to say. I says, say it like this. Don't say it your way. Say it my way. Okay. Man has become as one of us. First of all, you notice in that statement, serpent. was right remember and i'm i'd take this theme over and over again satan mixes lie with truth he embeds it in the truth and all you'll see is the truth and you won't think about the bad are you kidding me I had a pastor we were talking about it's a political year okay it's a political year Brother Glenn, you might lose your tax exempt status. No, I'm at my house. This is on my own. Um, this is for me. And by the way, you still have to tell the truth. Why would any politician 
who is a child of God, stand up for a political party rather than God. Can I say that again? Why would you stand up for a political party? Well, you know, because they do good for the people. What's good? The Bible says righteousness exalteth the nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. It's not how much money. Well, you got to have money. No, you don't. You got to have Jesus. You got to have God in your life. You must be born again. Those are commandments. Those are absolute facts and absolute truths that you got to have. You don't need money. You need God. You got God. You got money. You can worry. We ain't got nothing to eat. Really? More about this time. There'll be plenty of food, but you won't eat of it. Remember Elisha? <laughs> yeah, you you remember the uh, four lepers in the Old Testament? What a wonderful story. Yeah, God is going to supply. But my God shall supply your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. David said, I was young and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous, righteous forsaken who are seed begging bread. You must follow what God said. Serpent was right. He's mixing lie and truth together. Hey, your eyes, you'll be like God's. Go back to Genesis chapter three, same chapter. Verse number five, God doth know in the, the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open and you shall be as God's knowing good and evil. You'll be like God's knowing good and evil. Number 22, he is one of us to know good and evil. That's an absolute fact. That's why people accept it. Truth, got some truth in there, but they got the lies. Well, there's some truth now. But, you know, there's lies in there. So we got I'm sorry, I can't support you. Brother, I don't believe in that. Well, you're in the political party that says abortion's okay. Are you going to vote against it when it comes up? A pause, just that pause was enough for me. You question it. He's thinking about how I might have to get out of that party. Brother, you're talking about the Democrats. I'm talking, I'm an independent. I don't like the Republicans neither. They're just against somebody because they're a Democrat. Like it's Hatfield and McCoy. Why you hate the McCoys? Because they're McCoy. Why you hate the Hatfield? Because they're Hatfield. What do you got against them? Because of what? They're just no end to it. Stop the political mudslinging. Just tell the truth what you believe. Start talking about my opponent's this. He's got this. He's got this. Just talk about what you got. Tell them the truth, and you can be fine on that. You may not win. Don't need to win. I need to tell the truth. God does the winning. He'll put it in whoever he wants. Second thing you notice about this, not only was the serpent right, man is like God. What is he like God about? He knows good and evil. If he knows good and evil, beforehand was in the garden. Maybe you got angry. Eve, I told you, you're digging the holes too deep for me to put the seed in. It'll never come up. Small holes. And he shouldn't have said it like that. But he ain't saying it. He don't know that about it. Listen, honey, you don't know good and evil. She looks at him and says, look, honey, I told you to get home at 5 o'clock. I got supper on the table. You show up at 6 o'clock. I told you not to work over. And look what the food is. I'm sorry. It, it, that, they don't know sin. But now that you know it, now that you know it, what happens? You are accountable about what you do. You can't just go and do whatever you like. I'm going to go fishing over there. What is a no trespassing sign? Doesn't matter to me. I have no trespassing signs. I have absolutely nothing. God put nothing on me. The only one stipulation was that tree out there. Oh, but now I know everything. I'm like God. I knew good and evil. So I got to do what's right. There's a problem. Man has sinned. He now has sinned and comes short of the glory of God. He has come short of God's glory. He has a nature to sin now. Once you sin, wait, 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 brother, wait, wait. Uh, this one sin. Did you notice what happened? How do you know he's a sinner? Dust you are, and the dust you're going to return. 
You are a sinner. That's not going to happen unless you sin. That means that sin nature is there. You're going to live a long time because what? You're going to die in sin. You are going to die. You're going back to the dust. The evidence of sin, if you've ever read this before, the evidence of sin from the beginning of time is this, death. Paul the Apostle made the statement, he said, let me make this statement about the law of Moses that began, of course, in Genesis chapter, uh, excuse me, Genesis, Exodus chapter 20. You get the Ten Commandments and get all the laws in Exodus and Leviticus. When you begin to read those laws, man's now accountable. And you know you're accountable when you know the difference. So I'll give you the analogy. Now I'm going to give an analogy here to, let me block this off so you'll see the difference between this and the other one. Israel is in Egypt. On the way to the promised land. And on the way, they are going to stop. And they're going to make a pit stop. And they're going to just stop for a little while. They're going to go to Mount, Mount Sinai. What happens? That is in Exodus chapter 19 through Numbers Chapter 10 and verse 11. Uh, Exodus, Leviticus, and then Numbers 10 and 11. All that is at Mount Sinai. They get all the word of God. You'll find before they get there, on their way there, they begin to complain. We ain't got nothing to eat. God gave them manna from heaven. Never said a word to them. We got nothing to drink. So he goes and he gives the rock. Bring forth the water. They, all the things that they need. They get to Mount Sinai and they stay there at th 12 to 13 months. And they get all the word of God and everything about God. They know all the laws. God says, now you know, you're accountable. As soon as they leave on this side, they start on the way to the promised land, they complain. God killed a crowd of them. Woo, Lord, this is kind of mean, ain't you? That's kind of rough on us. And then they complained again. God says, I'll tell you what, I'll give you quail. I'll give you quail that runs out your nose. He was just, he destroyed them. Why? Because once you are no, once you know you are accountable to Adam and Eve, he says, now you know good and evil, you're accountable. But you've got a sin nature. So you got to do right and wrong. You know it, so you got to make sure you do what's good and not evil. But guess what? You got a sinful nature and you're going to be drawn to do what is evil. What do I do with that? The punishment's coming. Goodness. I thought God I thought God took away our sins. No. He covered their sins with the animals. What did they sacrifice in the Old Testament law? Animals. There was blood sacrifice. In fact, it was a bloody job. It was a meat house. When you went to the temple, it was a meat. That's why the Levites were very strong. The, the priests were strong. Men. They had to cut meat all day long. Cut it, section it, quarter it. That's what their job was. You're accountable, but you got a problem. So God covered their sins, correct? God covered their sins with the animal skins. He covered them. Yet, it wasn't sufficient. It was only a covering. Man is accountable now for his sins. He's got it, and he can't do what's right. And you know what the problem is. He's like, what, he knows good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and what? Live forever. So that's a contradiction in turn, Brother Glenn. Uh, but, oh, I'm sorry. Let me finish up. The evidence of sin. Let me, before I finish that verse, the evidence of sin. And he uses this. Can I use my uh, Google right quick? 
Google does a great job of this. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. Romans 5, go to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Sometimes I can quote it, I can't remember where it is initially. Go to verse number uh, 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, that's Adam, not Eve, Adam, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Sin isn't put on your account when there is no law. So in Adam's day, there was no accountability. There was accountability, but it's not put on your account. You got to do what's right, but you can't. You can't do what's right because it's not your nature, but you know good and evil and you can't. But now really all that Adam knew, he says he knows good and evil. Why does he know good and evil? When he took that tree, did he sin anymore after that? Well, he done pretty good. Did he lie? Where are you, Lord? Where are you? Where are you at? Well, I, 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 I hid myself. I was naked. Did you take of that tree? The woman you gave me. She gave me to eat. Just not being honest with God. It's easy now for him. But he's accountable. He's accountable now. Adam is accountable. But did you know God doesn't put sin on your account until the law, but the law, it came later. Verse 14, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over the similitude of them, and did not sin after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Those that didn't sin like Adam, they still died. Why? Because there's a sin nature that is passed from man to man, that death is going to come. Death reigned. Well, wait a minute. Until Moses comes and gives them the law and all the other things, why, why did they die? There's sin. How do you know there's sin? There's death. And this is, this is a theme of the Bible. Always recognize this. If you see such a thing as death, you will always see sin. When you say sin, you find death. You got death, you find sin. Every single time it's going to be like that. Sin, when it is finished, it brings forth death. You got death, whether it's sin somewhere. That's why That's what death came about to begin with. If you sin, death will come. Now God tells them, if we let him stay here, the tree of life, when you read that in the book of Revelation, chapter 22, we know it's good for the healing of the nation, correct? Was it 22? Yeah, I think it's 22. They'll live forever. That word, to heal, it's good for the healings of the nation, the pharmacopoeia. Pharmacope, pharmacope, I can't say the word pharmacy. That's what it means. But it means healing. If Adam stays here, he'll take of the tree of life and live forever. Problem. Problem. His sin has not been. He can't go. If he sins. If he did. He cannot go and be a, in fellowship with God. Right? You see. Right now. There is enmity. With God and man. They are not together. There's a wedge between them. Why? Because man has a sinful nature. He's got sin in his life. The, the, the covering of, of God only covered man's sin. If man goes in and takes of this tree of life, if he partakes of the tree of life, if he stays in his garden, he will live in this sinful condition all the days for an eternity. He's going to live like this with no fellowship with God who created him. So we got to get rid of him. We've got to get him out of the garden. Or he'll live forever in this state of sinfulness. In 4,000 years, God's going to send his son, born of a woman, made under the law. So we got to get rid of We got to get him out of there.
Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. Always about the earth with Adam. It's always about the dirt, the dust. And it says he's kicked man out. Well, that's the same as Eve. You know, she is Adam, right? She's just a rib. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims at the east side and a flaming sword which kept every way to keep the way of the tree of life. You're not going to get back in, Adam. Well, I don't want to die. Is this the theme that we have today? God is keeping them out of the garden so they can't be like what Ponce de Leon had, the fountain of youth. You never die. Remember the fountain of youth, Ponce de Leon, and his discovery looking for the fountain of youth? Remember Ponce, Ponce, P O N C E, P O N C E, D E L O N, L E O N. -E 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 he looked for the fountain of youth. Man wants to live forever, correct? They're going to have a cure for so and so when I die, put me in cryotherapy. Because they're my body, they'll bring me back. God says, you don't need to live in this state. That's what man chooses to do every day. Let me ask you a question. Because I practice medicine. If a doctor could give you a pill that every time you got sick, you get healed from that cancer. Healed from, how long would you live? Well, this is what God says you don't want to do. You don't want to live forever. He tells Adam, I don't want him to live forever like this. You need to get born again. Well, I'm born again now. I don't want to die. Are you a Christian? Do you really want to stay in this body that's sinful? Do you want to stay in this body that is sinful? Really? Philippians. One, verse 21. What does it say? For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. God established all this in this one verse in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 23. God kicked him out of the garden. He didn't want him to live forever. At verse 22 and 23, don't let him live in this sinful state. He comes to Christ. He won't have to live like that. He have fellowship with God. God's going to come in and sup with you and he with him. I have not seen Isaiah 64. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse what, 11, 12, 13, 14. God would live with you. Don't let him stay in that sinful state and live like this forever. He needs That's a better life, but that's what man. Are you a Christian? Is this what you're desiring, just to stay in this earth? Well, I want to see my grandkids. This is not, a, this is not your life. As Jesus said, You've been bought with a price. You don't belong to yourselves. Paul the Apostle, by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, said, chapter 12 and verse 1 of Romans, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, but just your reasonable service. Because you've been, you were bought. You were redeemed. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18 and 19. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from the vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish, without spot, you were redeemed with the blood of Christ. God bought you. You owe it to him. Now, don't you want to go be with him? <clears throat> but I'm afraid to die. Perhaps, perhaps, you're not looking to God. Perhaps God's somebody here to help you in your finances. Maybe you got saved to help you in your walk with your children. Be a better wife, a better husband. Maybe God's going to get you a better job. And make things better for you here. And he wasn't your savior. Maybe you haven't trusted him. 
But glad everybody's afraid to die. If you're afraid, does that mean that you have a preference to live in this sinful body all the days of your life? Don't you want it to die and be resurrected? Don't you want sin to be gone? I'm just asking you to start thinking the way God says it. Don't let man go back elite and live forever. He commanded and he put him out of the garden. And he put a cherubim there. A cherubim is a type of angel to keep the way of the tree of life, a flaming sword. By the way, in the Bible, we have angels. We got Satan. We got Gabriel. And we got Michael, the ones we named. And then we got two called seraphims and cherubims. The cherubims been mentioned here. And you got seraphims that are mentioned in the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 6. And by the way, they say these children are little angels or little cherubs. Angels, if you say, well, she's an angel in heaven now, it's a lie. You were never to be an angel. You were not created like the angels. You're living beneath your privilege when you're an angel. As he said in the book of Hebrews, he said, to none of the angels did he say, come sit it right by, by my side till I make heaven your whole, your earth your footstool. He never said anybody but a man he said it to, is what he's pointing out. God didn't die for the angels, but he died for you. They sinned, he didn't, he didn't do anything but reserve them for change, but he died for you. You're living beneath your privilege to say you're a child. Well, my child's an angel in heaven with God now. Sounds pretty, but it's very, very dangerous. It's dangerous. It's wrong. It's an absolute farce. God never died for them. He never loved them like he loved you. To give his only begotten son and God to become one of us. Sacrifice and offering, I'm quoting from the book. Sacrifice and offering, thou wouldest not but a body as thou prepared me. Okay. We have just finished the first three chapters of the book of Genesis sets the stage it's the groundwork now you understand what's going to happen chapter four and adam knew his wife knew, knew eve his wife and she conceived and bare cain and said i have gotten a man from the lord i have gotten a man from the lord the bible says adam knew his wife and she conceived and bore cain and said, I've gotten a man from the Lord. Cain was the first person ever born of man. He is the firstborn of all. He's that first little babe that is born, Cain. Do you remember from the book of Jude, when he talks about the false teachers, the false, those evil people, they've gone the way of Cain. Now, I, I like what uh, David Guzik said in an Enduring Word. Perhaps he knew she was going to bear forth a child that said the woman would bring forth, should be saved in her childbearing. Maybe the Messiah, maybe that's the one that's going to lead them. But it came, became the worst child ever. The firstborn was actually the worst. She called, I've gotten a man from the Lord. By the way, when it says he knew his wife, that's just a, a polite way of saying they had sexual relations. And which is also a very accurate statement. You actually know her. And Adam, no, and Eve knew her husband. No, Adam knew his wife. And she conceived and bare Cain and said, and he said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain a tiller of the ground. Well, I thought you had to eat of the ground, too. Well, we know that they had to do both. But the primary occupation, one was sheep, the other one was the earth. Both are noble. Now, we're going to read some things into there on Thursday night that are going to be, I don't want to, I don't want to get too far. We won't have time to explain this in the next three minutes. We're going to some things about Cain and Abel. Take the New Testament. Read about Abel. Read about Cain and the places that they're mentioned in the scriptures. <clears throat> Because this is the first family. And a religious argument is going to come about. And it's going to come about God. Something happened with God and it tore mankind apart. By the way, what it always has been and always will be. We'll start there on Thursday night. Heavenly Father, thank you for letting us join together. 
We thank you for the Lord, those who are listening. And some of these truths are difficult, God. Some of these things that we read through them, they don't exactly fit how we're living. But God, I pray that you give us the courage, as you told Joshua, we'll believe your word and follow it. Bless Lord, those listening now, give them the ability to understand. Lord, save those that are lost. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, uh, this I, 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 I do want to leave this one verse. In my prayer, I read this verse from the book of Joshua chapter 1. Only be thou strong and, and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do all according, to do according to all the law of Moses, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. That's in Joshua 1 verse 7. He needed courage to all that God did. God bless you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your patience. Um, great chapters. I mean, learn, learning a lot. Things for the future, okay? Have a blessed evening. Go to the church of your choice tomorrow night. If you have a place to go, we'll be right here. I'll be at my home church, and I'll be working there, okay? Have a blessed evening, and thank you for your